Are vegetarians out of their mind or are we omnivorous? Today we talk about the vegetarian diet. Hello everyone and welcome back on my channel. I'm Pasquale and I'm your nutritional lifestyle coach. Today, as promised, we start a new video series dedicated to diets and food regimes. And let's start with vegetarians. Let's see if vegetarians are crazy or do meaningless things or if they are right. Or if the truth, as many times happens, is in the middle. Let's do some history first, but very quick. Then we also see where it is more widespread and then logically what are the benefits and what are the risks. I will also leave in the links a couple of studies conducted on the vegetarian diet right below in the description box. Vegetarianism is present for centuries, but the first confirmation of its existence go back in time until the civilization of Magna Grecia. Pythagoras was one of the first, in addition to be the pain in the back for all our students for his beloved theorema, uh, to pursue this philosophy. Do not harm the animal species, to eat them. The Greeks even have the one single word, one single term to define humans and pets, Zoa. In various forms it's also present in its ancient Hinduism, where the killing of animals was not allowed and was allowed only in specific cases, like in life danger situations or during sacrifices. Jains and Buddhists also follow such te teachings in which it is forbidden to do absolutely any harm to every living creature for food purposes. A curious thing is that in both Greece and later times, even if the omnivores who used to offer animals in sacrifice still had to strict rules to their consumption. In the modern era, it can be said that vegetarianism is born and prolific initially in the United Kingdom, at the beginning for the 17th century with Roger Crabbe, then in the 18th century, the first of which began to come out theories about vegetarianism being healthier. In the middle of the 800s, then, the first vegetarian society, simply called Vegetarian Society, was formed in Kent and then other associations being uh, to start to spread in Germany and the United States and the rest of the world. In Italy, where I come from, the first association was born only in the second half of the 20th century. Nowadays we can say that the boom of the discussion of vegetarian nutrition was born in 1975 by Peter Singer, who published the book Animal Liberation. There are several reasons why one becomes vegetarian ethical, religious, environmental or health conscience. From my point of view, I will only dwell with the question of health. This is for various reasons. I stated that I'm not vegetarian, but I consume meat regularly, but this does not mean I do not agree with the motivation which lead to these choices. From the ethical point of view, I'm perfectly in tune with those who make this choice. The condition of the animals on intensive farm is very bad, as far as uh, someone say the opposite. Under the religious profile, I would not even allow myself to say anything at the at all because I consider this disrespectful. On the environmental side, it is known that the overproduction of meat and fish for food is causing lots of damage to the terrestrial ecosystem, but it's also a fairly and complex territory, so I focus on the other nutritional thing. Vegetarians, under the hats, they also include vegans, also known as vegetarians, raw vegans, and fruitarians. In addition, vegetarianism also has food and small division, such as those who avoid dairy products or eggs or um, on the other way around, or if they completely eliminate both. But being a vegetarian really leads us to being healthier. Does it make us lose weight faster? Helps prevent chronic diseases like, such as diabetes? Are these truths or are they all a bunch of lies? Well, actually the answer is more complex than you might think, but at the same time it's also simple intuition. Nutrition per se is already seen as a relatively uh, recent science, and in, rea in reality it is. So let's see together through the analysis of some studies of what we are talking actually about. For example, a Polish study in 2014 tried to understand the risk and benefits of changing the diet from omnivore to vegetarian. And here I repeat myself, but I only want to be clear, I only speak from the nutritional point of view. Very often, in fact, there has been said that bring a, pe a person to a vegetarian regime as primary reason for problem in deficiency of proteins. Uh, anemia and decreased creatine levels, which is an important intermediate product for the production of ATP, which is the actual uh, fuel for our body. But, uh, but as I said before, the truth is always in the middle. In fact, when we talk about the bal a balanced vegetarian diet, we must always take into account the foods that we are eliminating, such as meat, fish, molluscos, etc., and replace them with sources that can bring the same nutrient, especially in terms of protein, vitamins and minerals so that our organisms can function correctly. It sounds easy, but it's not. 
in the sense that you have to plan. We need to know what we are eliminating and replace it properly. If, for example, dairy product and eggs are not removed, we are already in a better position. If we take an example, um, an egg uh, of average size is about 7 grams of proteins and 5 grams of fats. So, with two eggs, boiled, scrambled or cooked, whatever you like, we introduce about 15, 14 grams of proteins and 10 grams of fat. Also, we add vitamin A, D and potassium. A slice of beef, more or less of the same weight, is about 34 grams of protein and 10 grams of fats. A grilled sea bass has about 24 grams of proteins, so you understand well that protein deficiency can be quite intense if you don't eat the same food. I'm not here to advertise meat, but to explain that you must be organized. For example, 100 grams of tofu contain about 16 grams of proteins, while 100 grams of tempeh contain about 20 grams. So you have to do things with some plan in mind. Another thing to take into account is the possible deficiency in vitamin B12 for those who apply a vegetarian diet, which is very close to the vegan lifestyle. This is because its deficiencies also causes rise in homocysteine, which is, can cause a cardiovascular problem and dysfunction on the menstrual cycle. Once these assumptions are made, are there really benefits in being vegetarian? Definitely there will be advantages. First, you increase the portions of fruit and vegetables. With all of that, it's also included a greater presence of dietary fiber, which is useful for our gut flora, which also leads to strengthening our immune system. Later, I'll be shooting a video on the connection between intestinal microflora and our immune system. Always, for the same reason, the amount of vitamins and minerals will certainly be greater. There are also benefits on our body mass index. So, can you lose weight? Well, if well applied, yes. The vegetables, both for their high fiber content and for the water content, tend to give a sense of fulfillment that lasts longer. Also, if you eat veggies first thing in your meals, well, you will also avoid exaggerating and portion. And I mentioned this several times in my previous videos. Moreover, by decreasing the fats of animal origin, one can also lower the risk of affecting our fat metabolism and thus decreasing the possibility of developing cardiovascular diseases or type 2 diabetes. Among other things, studies on the fact that a vegetarian diet can diminish the changes of developing diabetes have been done and are still ongoing. Their conclusion are a bit inconsistent in the sense that having an homogeneous sample is particularly difficult to find. I'll explain myself better here. In the development of diabetes, many other variables are coming into play, which are perhaps linked to culinary or religious cultures, or even really reliable to data collection. And if you followed my video about the allergies, you know what I'm talking about. In principle, many studies agree that a vegetarian diet leads to a reduction in body mass index, reduces the concentration of cholesterol in the plasma, and reduction of coronary arteries, artery diseases. This was also confirmed by a study done by Cambridge, uh, for, for which I leave the link in the description box below, as well as other studies that I use as a reference for this video. In particular, for coronary artery disease, the Cambridge study estimated that 40,000 deaths from this problem came be avoided. I'm a big fan of meat, but still I'm aware of this benefit, so I tend to limit the red one, like beef, and for which I will definitely make a video later to see if its excess can tr uh, trigger tumors, and I use a consumption of fish and white meats, like poultry. Of course, a steak once a week accompanied by a beautiful saddle does not create any problems in case you turn to be out vegetarian only in fear of medical and nutritional consequences. So, in conclusion, there is an evidence that a vegetarian diet can bring some benefits, especially on a cardiocirculatory level, but this is not said to be the only advantage because some studies are, too, are still too complex and don't have homogeneous results. Having said that, eating meat occasionally does not seem to invalidate these advantages when it's eaten sporadically and not as a common uh, habit. The advice I can give you is to avoid like a plague, various substitutes prepared just to remind you of the omnivorous flavors, like some processed preparation where there is everything um, that reminds you of flavor, a burger or a steak or eggs or cheese. If you made your choice, be consistent, because too many times you risk falling into the trap to reduce yourself to eating rubbish uh, of absurd craftsmanship when your food lifestyle should be instead um, be as natural as possible. Reading the label of products uh, you buy will certainly help you. Learn to read labels to avoid too much processed food, but concentrate on more natural things, such as raw vegetables, legumes, and so on. I hope this video has caught your interest. I'm working to be able to publish at least two videos per week, so you don't miss me for too long. You do miss me, don't you? Also, recently all my videos are also published as podcasts, so only audio, in case you don't have time to watch videos, but you just want to listen to my sweet voice with heavy Calabrian, Italian, Irish accent. The podcast can be found on iTunes, Spreaker, and Spotify. 
just search for Pasquale Riganello, which is me. I remind you that you also can find me on the social networks like Facebook and Instagram and recently even on Twitter and then YouTube where I only publish exclusively videos. If you are curious about who I am and what I do, you can also visit my website www.helpmefood.com. Well, I'll let you go for today, I'm only left to say it well, live well and smile and see you next time. Ciao!